You're now listening to the Zod and Drea podcast. We are back and we are, I guess you could say we kind of are a little recovering mode from this weekend. Yeah, we're finally uh, recovering from the We The People Summit, which was a really big success. They had about 850 people. Hey, that's cool. Yeah, so it's not bad. It's smaller than the 1,200 that they had last time, but it was in such a nice little compact area that I think that they really found a nice little niche. It it felt good. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, it felt a little bit more intimate. It did. It felt a lot more intimate. I think people were set up a lot better, and the flow was good between the escalators and the elevators and going to all the classes and the workshops. I think we you know, we were able to pull it off. So shout out to Jen Germain, Trisha Sauer, and Murphy Bannerman for their, um, I guess, their work in helping and starting this Bravo, and getting this thing ladies. off of the uh, ground, you know? You got something going, and it's it's people are now excited for the next one. No doubt. And shout out to Zod and Drea for you know, their part in being able to help with the We The People as well. Pat so, on the shoulders, pat you know, on the shoulders. You know, mm-hmm. don't, don't let us, don't, 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 don't just drop off the, off to the side, you know. Yo, shout out to <laughs> JMT, but come on now. Give it to ZND also. ZND. All right, all right. All right. So uh, what are we going to be doing? We're going to be getting into a nice little uh, podcast this time around, and let's talk about some serious issues. Issues and uh, you know, a fun movie. Well, we're gonna talk first about um, for relationships. Ready for that? Yeah, we're gonna talk about reasons not to date somebody. So, what are some reasons you wouldn't date somebody? You know, I mean, because because I mean, especially now, you know, you were older and you kind of think about about what you've dated in the past, and you're like, you know what, would that even fly now? Right. You know, and then you think about like, why did I even go for that? You know, did I just fall for the pretty face? Who knows what? But um, you know, we're gonna talk a little bit about that. On the um, entertainment sector, of course, we're going to talk about the new hit movie from Marvel that's out, Thor Ragnarok. Um, it was a lot of fun. Uh, so if you haven't seen Thor Ragnarok, it made a lot of money, too. How it, much did it make? I don't know. It made a lot, though, like 400-something million worldwide. So oh, my God. Um, and then, of course, what's, the, uh, what's our final uh, destination, which is what we're going to be talking about? Terrorism. Its definition and how it protects white men. Yep, how it protects white men. Because you got to figure, there's a reason why they're not being called terrorists and Muslims are. So it's got to be within the definition. So we're going to talk about the definition of why that is and, you know, how it occurs and what we can change. Has it changed throughout history? You know, what is it that protects them? Mm -hmm. So I think we're we're going to really dive into this. So again... We got to talk about what's going on. So this is something that's definitely that's on top of our heads. But I mean, before we do, let's just um, kill it with my man Thor, because um, he killed it in the game this time. Um, if you haven't been keeping up, all right. I mean, from Iron Man in twenty, I think it was twenty oh eight. I think I think Iron Man is twenty oh eight or twenty oh nine, something like that. Almost nine years Can you ago. That it was a long time ago. Um, yeah. Um, to Black Panther, which is going to be opening up in I think it was January, February. February. In February. During Black so, History Month. So yeah, in February. So we've got a big, long history of Marvel movies that have been happening, entertaining people. I and mean, these guys have made billions and billions of dollars off of these movies. And, you know, after the first Thor, and then the second one with the Dark Elves, um, you know, it was more gritty. It was more, you know, they took Thor seriously. It looks like this time around, they were like, you know what? They're just going to throw everything at Thor because he's got to be in the Avenger movies. Mm-hmm. But we got to keep his story interesting. It's like, you know what? What the hell? Just like, let's make Thor Ragnarok just become like a psychedelic rock and roll it movie. It was so, <laughs> like, it tripped me out. Because I'm like, what kind of place do they have him in? What kind of planet? He's not like the, like, okay, the first Thor, I can, I have to admit, it's a little goofy to me. Second one I liked. Yeah, I yeah. liked the second Thor. People give it shit. I, I liked, liked it. it. And so this one, it was just like, like you said, like, let's just throw this out there. Make it fun, but also the other characters really yeah. added so much to this movie. So what they did was they made Thor a uh, way more. Um, he was almost charismatic, but he was a uh, com- comedic almost. He wasn't a joke, but he didn't take things as seriously as you always mm-hmm. hear. Loki, you know, he w- it wasn't any of that. It was like, oh, Loki. I am the yeah. god of. I'm like, oh yeah, he would always <laughs> announce. I am the, the son of Odin. Of the son of Odin, god of thunder. You know. <laughs> So, it's funny, he's the god of thunder, but he always uses lightning. 
But um, <laughs> right, because that, that just doesn't come out very good in CGI. <laughs> um, so it's kind of wild that uh, you know we got Loki. You know, it's two years later after the last um, God, which movie? I guess the Avengers movie. Yeah, it was. The, it's two years later after the last Avengers movie when they fought um, all the robots in Ultron. So Thor oh, yeah. has been searching the nine realms for all the Infinity Stones, trying to capture him, but he couldn't, you know, couldn't find them, whatever. So he comes back home. Now, if you remember at the end of the last, I think it was Thor movie, um, what's his name? Loki had taken over. I don't know if you remember at the end, Loki had taken over as Odin. Do you remember? We weren't sure what happened, but he was he was Odin. He was sitting on the throne. Part. Yeah, he was the one sitting on the throne. So now we kind of figure out later, two years later, he's still sitting on that throne. But now he's completely goofed off over at Asgard, throwing that crazy play, and you know, he's just having a good time. It's just yeah. it's just the Loki party, like making the, the memory of Loki. Like like I mean, he was his <laughs> hero, you know, of Asgard, and Thor comes back home with his hammer. Um, after defeating, um, I think his name is Sutur. Su- 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 so would you say that Su- Loki Su- participated like in fake news? Yeah, he was very <laughs> fake news. Like, Loki was so fake news. Um, and Thor comes home to his brother. And he knows that he knows the jig is up. He's like, oh, come on. So he's like, where's father? You know. So they go back to find father, who is who Loki had put in, <laughs> in a frigging uh, old folks' home in like, New York, like in New York City, <laughs> which was funny, you know. Odin, you know, <laughs> he's fought things for like millions of years, whatever, and here he is in old folks' home for the last two years, and he kind of liked it, you know. He, he kind of liked it there, where he just kind of relaxed and he didn't really. Um, he didn't have to, to be the, this fantastic yeah, Odin. Yeah, so he kind of like just chilled out, and uh, you know things were okay, and he didn't worry about it. So he's dying off. Um, we meet. Uh, uh, Victor, uh, well, I mean, you know, Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. Doctor Strange comes in, and you can tell that's where they were merging some of the movies into. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and how they were coming into merging some of the universe in. But um, if you haven't seen, you just gotta have a lot of fun because from there, you know, no spoiler, but you know, Odin, I guess he disintegrates or whatever. But then that's when they meet Hela, his sister, Thor's sister, who was the firstborn, who was. Way more powerful than Thor. Holy crap. <laughs> like, way more powerful than Thor. Um, and, I mean, we get to see things that happens to Thor's face. You know, at the end, I don't want to say what like happens. Like, Thor's true family background. Like, um, it's crazy. Oh, but I'm talking about the end, like, his face. Oh, I'm not don't, say don't say that thing. Don't say that thing. I don't know. I, I never go away spoils. Mm-mm. But uh, the fact that he, he he does meet up with the Hulk in um, uh, the Sakaar. So, if you're um, a fan of the World War Hulk movies, we don't find out why the Hulk is there yet. But he's there, and Hulk is a gigantic part of this movie. Um, also a good part of this movie is Valkyrie. Yeah, Valkyrie was cool. I like Korg, but I like Valkyrie. Did you know that Korg is, you remember his voice? Yeah. He was the, the director. No way! Yeah, the director's <laughs> voice. you got to hear Korg's voice. Korg is like a favorite already. He is. He's awesome. <laughs> That's so but cool. anyway, check out the review on the Zadendrea, uh, doc, on Zadendrea.com, and we have it all listed out for you. But make sure you see Thor Ragnarok. All right, so let's move on to mm, our relationship part, which will be what are some of the reasons you wouldn't date someone? Now think about this, people. Think about who you're dating and who you have dated and maybe even who you want to date. Mm-hmm. You know, what are some of the things that um, you wouldn't... What are, what are some reasons you wouldn't date someone? One reason is they're just mean. I know that sounds very general. Boring. Come on. But like just somebody that's just mean. Like, no, I don't want. I'm mean. Come on. Give me something. No, no, you're not mean. No, I mean, it's just somebody that genuinely just does not seem to have a a, a very good bone in their body. Like somebody that is just totally self-serving. And I have to, you know, and, you know, younger. Yeah. You know, you, you know, sometimes girls, I know I was attracted to guys that are maybe a little bit more arrogant, maybe a little bit more confidence, but the, there's just some guys that will just take that to the extreme and make it to where all of their, their self-serving traits just come out very mean and not really wanting to share a life with somebody that I just don't have time for. See, you're more personality, which I understand. I actually um, dated a girl and uh, broke up with her because she didn't talk enough. Mm-hmm. Like she, she was just too quiet. <laughs> like I'm like I'm so sick of starting conversations with you. You know, it's like mm-hmm. I tried to. Uh, I tried. I remember in college, I tried. I had brought her to my college just like during a summer session, and uh, tried to like pawn her off to a friend of mine. I'm like, you know, you probably be really good for my girlfriend. Um, but that didn't work out. I also uh, think that like. Men are more physical, so the thing is, I wouldn't date is like a smoker. I don't like. I've yeah, done it. I've done it. Smokers. Like I've done it. Um, you know, shout out to Jane. She, she, like, she wound up. Well, I mean, our, our relationship. 
let's just say we're better off now than we were then. Um, there's a lot more respect now. But back then, I didn't know that she had smoked. Mm -hmm. Like, I had no idea she had smoked when we got together. Um, but, you know, not to even single her out, because she's, she's a cool chick regardless. Like, I, I love her to death. But um, even some of the ones that I tried to date afterwards, like, um, you know, I date online a lot. And I remember this one girl over here in um, Phoenix. Um, you know, I was doing my dating thing and went to meet up with her. You know, you look up non-smokers. That's what you look up, non-smokers. And for me, that meant anything. Weed, nothing, everything. Cigarettes. You know, I'd go over there and uh, first of all, she had like seven glasses of wine on our first date. I'm like, God damn. Then we get to her house. She starts smoking. I'm like, yo, what are you doing? You said you, know, you think you don't smoke. Oh, well, I only smoke when I drink. Yeah, but you drink like a fish. Like, you know, <laughs> so you were a smoker. So I was pissed off about that, and I didn't wind up dating her. I mean, for other reasons, but that was definitely a big reason. Mm -hmm. So dating is one of the things. You know, obviously pill pushing or, um, you know, Ooh. doing drugs. You, the, the heroin? No, I'm the just heroin? not into no? that. Then there's no? some guys who they don't care, man. She'll look like Halle Berry, and they're like, you know what? Uh, I mean, Halle Berry, I guess you Whatever, they'll look like a Let's cheap, a a cheap, cheap, cheap yeah. version of Halle Berry <laughs> and, and be like smoking some, some, some crack, or, you know, and they're like, mm -hmm. you know what, I can look past the crack. Cause, you know. It's Halle Berry. <laughs> you know, I was like, yeah, how do you do that? I think also to someone that's super conservative. I dated somebody oh. for a long time that was conservative, and for me it was like, okay, that's a challenge then. Maybe we can both come to an agreement on... On like yes, you think that way, I think this way, and then it, it just turned out to not end up well at all. So that I really, for myself, I, I can't be with somebody that's super there conservative. There will be blood. I could, yeah. I, like I can't do that. God, super conservative. Imagine, oh man, like a no offense to Republicans, okay? Yeah, you no know, offense. No offense. You know, you are who you are, but. I do know some cool Republicans yeah. that did not vote for for Trump. And you I, know. Would, I never would have. I mean. But the thing is, like, that's just the thing with conservatives. It's like, when the liberals tell you this guy is dangerous for people, and for me personally, and people who look like me, listen to me. So I couldn't date someone who's like, you know what? You're cool, but I'd rather have him because he serves me more than you. Like, like my detriment, what's detrimental to me obviously doesn't matter. To so no, I wouldn't date that. Um, obviously bad hygiene, you know, little things like that, you wouldn't date somebody, but... Oh, I wouldn't date somebody that does not acknowledge their kids. I was about to say kids. I was, mm -hmm. about, to, I was about to go to the kids. Not only acknowledge the kid, but people who neglect. Oh, well, well also, yeah, neglect. Who don't, you're saying don't acknowledge, but yeah, people who neglect their own children. But even those who, like, leave their children to people they think, like, like people who leave them to, like, ex-boyfriends. and Yeah. Or, or even the ones who, like, I just met this dude, but he's going to, like, Right, I just met babysit. this dude two weeks ago, but he's going to babysit, gonna babysit my, kid my kid all day like, long. Like, how about no? Yeah, no. You know what? So we already know there are undateable people, and we're just going to leave it at that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's a big one for me. Yeah, yeah. Please yeah. listen so carefully. Tell us what you listen. think. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Zod. <laughs> and I'm Drea. And we want you to check out the Zod and Drea podcast every Tuesday. Where can everybody find us at? Hmm. You can always check us out on www.zodandrea.com. Where else? You can always check us out also on Facebook at Zod Andrea. Instagram? Zod Andrea. Snapchat. Zod and Drea. YouTube. Zod and Drea. I see a pattern. I see a pattern. <laughs> so if you haven't caught that, catch us at Zod Andrea on all the social networks. But also make sure you subscribe to the Zod Andrea podcast where? At ZodAndrea.com. And also on YouTube and iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher and iHeartRadio, we're coming for you. Let us know what you think, and if you want to be a guest, reach out to us. And put all of your input into whatever our topics are for the week. So we hope to check you out and see you there. Bye. All right, people, we are back in action, and we are going to get into this topic, which is terrorism, its definition, and how it protects white men. So what do you think? I mean, before we get into it, I mean, should we talk about the definition of what terrorism is? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna, we're going to spit off two definitions, actually. So I'm going to talk about the Merriam-Webster definition of terrorism, which is the systematic use of terror, especially as a means of co coercion. Okay, so then when looking up terror, what is terror? A state of intense fear, one that inspires fear, a frightening aspect, a cause of anxiety, an appalling person or thing... Um, mm -hmm. Violent or destructive acts, such as bombing, committed by groups in order to intimidate a population or government into granting their demands. 
So we have a whole bunch of different definitions of terrorists, and then a terrorism is the systematic use of terror, especially as a means of cohesion. So what does the FBI say? FBI has two definitions for terrorism. They have one for international and one for domestic. So I'm thinking the one for domestic would probably be the best one then for our conversation for today. <laughs> domestic terrorism is perpetrated by individuals and or groups inspired by or associated with primarily U.S.-based movements that espouse, did I say yeah. that? Uh, extremist ideologies of a political, religious, social, radical or environmental nature for example the june 8th 2014 las vegas shooting which i didn't even know there was one there during which two police officers inside a restaurant were killed in ambush style attack which was committed by a married couple who had anti-government views and who intended to use the shooting to start a revolution are those the ones who uh, wait are those one that went to walmart uh this one they're saying a restaurant it was a yeah, restaurant inside yeah, las they vegas killed a couple of cops then they mm -hmm. went to the restaurant they went to walmart afterwards where a guy one of the good guys with a gun went and uh, I think he tried to like do something. I think they shot him or something like that. Um, so we got these terrorists. So the definitions that we have now, I mean, again, a state of intense fear or violent or destructive acts committed by groups in order to intimidate a population, you know, so it can be that. When you talk about those definitions, then that means there has to be something it's a systematic use of terror especially as it means a coercion you're trying to coerce something the way that the fbi then talks about it is it's almost like you have to have a political gain from it mm -hmm. so then if a muslim guy who is automatically especially after 9 one one after 9 11 you know, it's like, wait a minute, where do these guys come from? They came from here, but what they do it for? Oh, they hate America. America is great. It's terrible, and we're going to have to take away their, their freedom. Like, how would you do that? Well, they kind of did it because then the Congress took away your freedom using the Patriot Act. But um, that wasn't really them. That was Congress doing what they probably had all along. Probably had that. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, it's like, oh, yeah, we got a reason. We got an excuse uh, to surveil all of our American public, but... But yeah, people still go missing and no one can find them. Yeah, right? I don't yeah understand sure, that. sure. So when we got this definition, how it protects white men, we have these Muslims who wind up doing this, 19 people, then it's just one after the other. Then you have uh, the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, then ISIS that comes out of it. And what people see on their screens is nothing but, oh, terrorists and terrorism, they're blowing up people, da da da. All a person has to do, a Muslim person has to do then is say, Allahu Akbar then all of a sudden you are definitely a terrorist, mm -hmm. number one. Like, you, you, like, you're not coming back from that one, um, besides just looking the part. So we'll have white Americans mostly who wind up saying, yeah, he's a terrorist, before anything even ha Like, as, as soon as they, it's almost like they wait in baiting breath to find out what the guy looks like. And as soon as he comes with a big beard. And, yeah, I was say, oh, he's got a beard. Yeah, and it's then, dark. Then it is a terrorist. Mm -hmm. No problem. And I can't pronounce his name. I yeah. Can't pro yeah, right? <laughs> he's from what country? I can't say that. Shoot, he's a terrorist. Yet, what they never do is say, oh, you know, he's a lone wolf. They never call right. him that, even though he's alone. They never say, oh, you know what? He might be off his meds and he may have a, I mean. He's disturbed. He's disturbed. They never say that. It's the first thing is terrorism. If mm -hmm. it's a black person who shot a bunch of people, he's a thug. You know, they wind up with these, um, these terms for people to make sure they look like they are other than. They are savages and animals. And not to justify what they've done, obviously. Yeah, that's not what we're talking that's about. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about how the definition of terrorism protects white men. Because what happens after a white guy goes to Las Vegas, shoots 500, 600 people, um, 58 of them die, and then, you know, he died later. I guess he killed himself. Self-inflicted wounds. Mm -hmm. So he's the 59th. But for some reason, because they couldn't find a note, he didn't yell, Alu Akbar. Um, he didn't say, I hate America. I didn't, he doesn't get defined as And a he was rich. Did you notice how in the media they said, well, he's, so, he's very wealthy and mm -hmm. he's got all these properties. He must have been just going through a tough time. It must have been the gambling that he was doing. Like all of a sudden, these excuses just started to come up out of nowhere. Not necessarily just going straight at it like, no, this guy was a major asshole, was a jerk. He was a terrorist. He completely planned out this event to kill 
hundreds and hundreds of people, even more. He wanted to inflict damage. A systematic use of terror, especially as a means of coercion. I don't know what he was trying to do, but he was trying to coerce something. I mean, to me, if you go by terror, one that inspires fear. One that inspires fear. A cause of anxiety. And you be you you like that's what you want to do by shooting. Then you are a terrorist. It's the definition that people put on it mm-hmm. to make sure that it protects white men specifically. Because the first thing that Donald Trump did when the guy came out um, in the in New York with the you know the uh, what do you call it Home Depot truck and he ran down those poor eight people is he went right to Twitter and said, oh, you know what, we got to have a ban on these people. And right. you know, he was like, oh, terrorists. Immediately and wanted to shut the borders. Immediately wanted to shut the borders down from these people and these animals and whatever, da, da, da. But as soon as this guy, or even the Las Vegas shooter, he, we have to wait. We got to wait. We're gonna I can't send, assume. Nope. We can't assume anything that's mm-hmm. happened. Thoughts and prayers. Um, as soon as this happens, um, Devin Kelly or whatever the hell his name is, all these names are starting to blur because uh, they're going by so quickly. Um, it's like he has to wait. And from Japan, he's like, oh, you know what? We've got to deal with the mental illness. Cri-. Like, why is it that white men have mental illness so badly in this country? But yet Muslim people, black people, they can't seem to have mental illness. Mm-mm. They can't seem to be lone wolves. There's not a, a level playing field here. And this is serious. You know, it's, 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 it's trying to define people, but not using the same level playing ground. Mm-hmm. You know, so, I mean, like, what is it? The guy who drove into those protesters in Charlottesville. And killed a woman. Killed a woman. He wanted that, like, how is that not the definition of domestic terrorism? Mm-hmm. You are a terrorist to me. You know, you can move the goalposts as far back as you want to, to try to protect these people. But call it for what it is. Like, I mean, we can go back. We can go back. Well, my question is why? Why protect them? Because they look like their uncles. They look like their cousins. They look like their brothers. You know, they, they look like people that they, they just can't seem. When they look at a black person, they can't identify with that. Mm-hmm. He becomes an other. When they see somebody. The who bad is, guy. He's, like, just in, uh, he's, he can't possibly be good because I don't know what that is. Mm-hmm. He's wearing a turban and he speaks in a, you know, he's got an accent. I don't know that world. You know, what is that? It's almost like looking at a chupacabra. I was like, what the hell is that? And I oh, got to kill it. And I got to run. You kill it, I'll run. You know? It's like, geez, what is that? I don't know what it is. So it, since I can't identify with it, it's got to be something bad. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's how they looked at Michael Brown before the cops shot him. It's like, Michael Brown is the only person on the planet Earth that gets shot inside of a police vehicle in his hand, runs away. Then for whatever reason, while he's running away, he stops, turns around, gets mad, and like the Darren Wilson says, looked like a big bull and starts running and charging back. What man in the world do you know has ever been shot, runs away from the bullets getting shot at him, but somehow stops and runs towards you? Like, it's crap. They see us as these animals, these animals. So when they... See another man, hey, he's a rich white guy. He's like, oh, he's white. Like, he can't possibly be that bad. There's something that must have, you know, irked him. Mm-hmm. You know, we can go to New York City with, the, with that attack. We can go to, but the data shows that there's way more domestic terrorism from white America than there are from Muslims. Mm-hmm. Like, um, what they say on here, I'm on a uh, on Vox.com, and uh, they're talking about domestic terrorism incidents by type, just from 2008 to 2016, and the right wing, the right wing acts that happen, and also the ones that are foiled are almost 120. Islamic ones that were had acts and foiled are only a little bit past 60. So if you take the right wing, which are mostly white people and white, you know, white right wing supremacist people, they tried. 
for 120 or almost 120, and they got about, what, 70, a little bit more than 70, 75. So they had like 75 incidents of terrorism uh, domestically, whereas Islam only had like 18 at that time. Like that number, it's like 75 versus 18, you know, committed, besides the ones that were foiled. And then left wing is about the same as Islam. Left wing uh, terrorist uh, happened probably about the same, probably 18 or 19, you know, something like that. So with all these statistics, all these facts, true facts, why is it still so hard then for, um, for the gun lobbyists and the, the, these, the, 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 these Congress men and women that are Republican to not see this, to not understand that this is so so much bigger. Money and votes. Like, here's the thing. People do not – like some people, they don't care about what happened. They don't care about Chicago. You know, they use it all the time. What about black-on-black violence? What about Chicago? That's their go-to. Mm-hmm. They don't care about these people. What about it? What are you going to do about it? You know, you can actually pass some simple gun laws that can stop people from getting killed, crossing the border into Indiana, bringing it into Chicago. It doesn't matter how – like you know anti-gun chicago is when you can walk over a border or take a train or a bus and come back over with guns then your borders are they're bunk they don't do anything Mm -hmm. so they don't care about what happens to these people the gun lobby laws they just want to make sure they have the votes of the people and they keep people in constant fear thinking that really the people from chicago are going to come and get you you know you got to make sure you stack up from guns a lot of them are always also still looking at the 250 year old document talking about oh the tyranny the tyranny is going to happen you know like ragnarok is going to happen you know it's like nothing's going to happen people like and, and even if they did you don't have the drones to stop them. So if the government decided tyranny is going to happen right now, what odds are the American people with their stupid AR-15s and some of the rifles and handguns going to have against them? What? Nothing. Against a tank? Against some <laughs> drones? What are you going to do? So passing some of these comprehensive gun laws is just good for people. It's right. just good for people. And I know I'm not saying like to change any... Uh, laws regarding who can have your gun like yes we all have the right to bear arms protect yourself i'm saying the guy next door better not have an mi uh, semi-automatic weapon an ak-47 why why are all of these huge tremendous t- weapons are, ne- are are so accessible to anybody to get I understand the handgun. You protect yourself, right? Or if you are a hunter, you know, you go hunting and you have your rifle. You have all of, I'm sorry, I have a rifle. I don't know what, I well, don't you do. Hunt, yeah, so. you do a rifle. Yes. You have a rifle for hunting. You've got all those tools that you have for hunting, which I know you need to have certain licenses for. You need to keep those updated. I'm not saying those should be gone. What I'm asking is why, why have such huge amounts of these weapons available to everybody and anybody and now especially this guy who was kicked out of the army no now, air he, force no, no, no he was, wasn't was it he was a off? either way he he had yeah i think so um dishonorable uh, honor um, dishonorable but it's the fact that it wasn't related about his um abuse against his wife and it wasn't you know even still even still you know if he really wanted to go and get a gun and get, he, like he's gonna do it so right. But, you know, some of these laws, at least, you know, that was a mistake on their part. Who knows if that's the reason? I don't know. But mental illness, like, we, we must have a lot of mentally ill white people in the frigging United States if none of them are getting help and they're just shooting everybody. Obviously, that must be another topic, Liz. What kind of, what kind of a, a mental breakdown is happening with white men? Yeah, at least white Americans. I got this uh, meme um, on my page. It's funny. It says, isn't it strange? How mental illness hardly massacres anyone in Canada, Australia, and the United Kingdom. I mm. mean, it's true. Like, uh, they never go off of that mental illness, but United States, yeah, sure. Blame it on the Muslims, because, you know, it's your go-to. They brought it. Yeah, they go to, you know. But anyway, people, you look, that's it. You know, we, we, we got through this once again. We don't want to talk about this again. But we're going to, because like, this know, is going this is to happen. Like- so heartbreaking because they don't no because hey the one thing they're they're always happy about after every attack the nra and the right wing is the fact that they're not going to do anything about gun laws Mm -hmm. so they didn't do anything after sandy hook they won't do anything yeah if they're gonna have a whole bunch of kids dying they're not gonna do anything about this so guess what you're gonna have to wait till you're the next one who gets shot and guess what nothing's gonna happen for your death but in the meantime make sure you catch us on facebook 
at Zod Andrea, as well as Instagram, Snapchat. Hell, we're on Pinterest. We're on everywhere. But check us out on iTunes, Google Play. Uh, and check us out in the uh, interviews we had at the We The People Summit. Yeah, check out the We The People Summit. Yeah, we have them on all of those um, platforms. Um, we got to interview some cool people. And go videos. see Thor. Have some fun. Yeah, have some fun. Yeah, get away from this crap. All right, bye. Bye. Bye.